Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new Star Wars Dole the Public video and today we're going to be talking about changes that are going to be happening to endgame gear in patch 5.0 or when Knights of the Eternal Throne hits. Now uh, all this information is coming off the dev tracker here so you guys can go ahead and check it out yourself if you want to read it for yourself but I'm just going to be going through the changes and then at the end of this video I'm going to be talking about what bothers me the most about this. Well let's just get into what the changes are. So all this is going to happen once you hit level 70. And right now, the source of your endgame gear is, you know, you do these um, your heroics, flashpoints, and mostly operations, and you get tokens. And then you can give in those tokens and get gear. So you have three tiers of gear. You have the basic one, the elite, and the ultimate one. Well, now your only source of endgame gear will be coming from these new command crates, which are coming from the galactic command feature. And I talked about this in a previous video where I went through some of the data mine information, and most of that is still holding true. Uh, the, the dev live stream was today, which I watched, and all of that information came up there. But in summary, what it is is that throughout the game, you're going to be doing activities like flashpoints, heroics, uprisings, and operations, and war zones even, and then you're going to gain command experience points. Then, as you gain more command experience points, you will level up your command rank, and each time you level up your command rank, you will you will earn a command crate, and then this command crate will gain. I mean, sorry, this command crate will contain uh, end game gear. Uh, so just think about it as like your experience bar, right? As you do missions, you gain experience. As you gain more experience, you level up, and as you level up, you gain new abilities. For example, like so, think of it like that. Now, in terms of what kind of gear you're going to be getting, the higher your command rank, the better gear that will drop from your command crate. So for example, uh, if you want the best PvP or PvE gear, you need to have a command rank of 100. Now that is absolutely insane. I'm going to be talking about why that's particularly harmful at the end of this video. But let's just get through the information first. Um, now the highest difficulties, operations, and uprisings along with ranked war zones. These three things combined are going to be the fastest way to earn command experience points and thus level you up so basically that's your incentive of doing this because right now your incentive of going into hard mode and nightmare mode operations is they drop you amazing gear but now with this new patch gear will no longer drop from these bosses so if you go ahead and do an operation these operation bosses won't be dropping you gear all of your gear is only going to come from those command crates so your incentive to do these kind of high level operations and stuff is that they are going to give you substantially more uh, command experience points and doing something very relatively easy like heroics. Um, and then players will be able to craft comparable item level gear without set bonuses. So very similar to the system right now, crafting is going to become pretty important because uh, it's going to be able to give you that starter up gear to allow you to do operations and stuff. Because right off the bat, you know, when you hit level 70, you won't have good enough gear to really jump into uh, operations. So that crafting is going to become pretty important and it will give you very substantial stats. It just, it won't give you a set bonus. So those are kind of the major changes that are going to be happening. Um, going into some of the other stuff, expertise is no longer a thing in the game. I'm actually pretty happy about that. I didn't really think uh, it was particularly helpful that people, you know, spent hours getting the best ranked PvP gear and then if they decide that they want to PvE one day, they can't really do it because they don't have the gear. So PvE and PvP gear will be exactly the same thing. The highest level PvE gear that you're going to be using to run Nightmare Mode Operations, for example, is also going to be the exact same gear if you want to do ranked PvP. There is absolutely no expertise. Some of you guys might be wondering what happens with the expertise crystals. Well, as they mentioned here, any color crystals that have expertise will be converted into mastery. So now we're going to basically have mastery crystals, which is actually a pretty good thing because if you check the GTN right now, usually the cheapest crystals you'll find are the war hero crystals, which contain expertise. So I'm hoping that maybe now that they're changing it to mastery, a lot more people are actually going to want that. So it's actually going to make them a lot more valuable. But anyways, that's what's going to happen to your color crystals. And so any crystals you have right now are going to be converted when patch 5.0 hits. Um, there's also no longer an expertise requirement to get into ranked war zones. This will be replaced with a valor requirement. Now, I don't particularly think that's a good thing because um, valor requirement doesn't necessarily mean you're still a good player or that you have the best gear. Like there can be people out there that have very, very high valor like me but aren't like experienced or have the best gear. Like I, if, I, if I want to jump into a ranked war zone with my new level 70 juggernaut, I don't need to have ranked gear to do that because I have a crazy high amount of valor on it. So um, that's not really going to prevent people from jumping into these things with very low expertise or with very low gear. Once again, expertise isn't going to be a thing. 
So、um, that's not really a good thing. And the other thing is, what if you like boost a character to sixty or sixty-five, and you're a very experienced player, and you boost that character to seventy? Well, you're not going to be able to jump into a ranked、uh, Warzone with that because you won't have enough Valor, and it's going to be hell trying to go ahead and keep playing Warzone just to get the Valor up on one character so that you can play some ranked PVP, even though you have the gear for it.、Uh, it says your crystals and Warzone accommodations will be phased out in Eternal Throne, and we don't have details about conversion plans. So if you do have, you know, tons of Warzone accommodations, I personally have been racking up Warzone accommodations in anticipation for a Coated. So I was playing war zones on some of my characters. I was making sure I didn't spend any of them because I wanted to make sure I could get the rank PVP gear. But now I'm learning that、uh, those war zone accommodations won't actually matter. So I'm very interested to see how those are going to be converted and how those are going to help me、uh, get PVP gear when、uh, Kotet hits. So the devs answered some very important questions, and a lot of these are actually pretty important questions. So one person asked, "What happens to priority ops?" And they answered, "Priority ops will no longer exist. They are being replaced with operations that can be a daily bonus, and that they will award more a CXP for doing them." So that does not just apply to operations; that applies to all events. So one day, for example, uprisings might be the priority, and so if you do uprisings on that day, you're going to be gaining more CXP than doing an operation. Uh, another person asks, "Is there a cap to a command rank? As in, for example, you reach level 100 command rank and you can progress no further."、Uh, also, will any of this affect gearing prior to level 70? So he says there is a cap, and when you hit that cap, you will continue to earn CXP. So when you hit level 100, you continue to earn it, and you'll fill your bar, and so that you level up and you gain command ranks. I mean, you gain you gain command crates because keep in mind, just because you hit rank 100, that doesn't mean you have a full set of gear that you can use in PVE or PVP. And so you're still going to be able to gain levels and、um, and get those crates, but、um, when you、uh, when you fill that level, you won't level up. It'll just kind of reset.、Uh, a few other questions here. It's one person asks. Just to clarify, you only have to hit level seventy to access command ranks and not complete the Kotet story. That is true. You don't need to complete Kotet in order to access Galactic Command. Is there a max level for command ranks? Yes, there is, and I think it's going to be one hundred. But they said still in flux. And then the one person asks, "Once we hit that level, will there be any other way to obtain rewards that we didn't get?" And he said, "Yes, you will."、And、that's just the same thing that we already talked about beforehand, which is where you know once you feel the level, it's just going to reset, but you still continue to get the command crates. All right. So also, what happens to all the current commendations? Do we get turned into points, or are they just rendered worthless? And he said, "We have more details coming with that in the coming weeks, so we'll learn about that later."、Uh, the one person asked a very important question: Are these random drops? So if you're extremely lucky, you can't get a certain thing that you really need. Like for example, as this guy said, if I need the earpiece, do I just need to kind of hope that the RNG is with me and I'll get that earpiece? And then secondly, are you saying that if a player grinds heroic twos for long enough, he can get to nightmare gear?、Uh, well. The answer: The drops will be random, so the item type is determined by your advanced class, and the item rating is determined by your command rank. But otherwise, which item you get is going to be、uh, completely random, and that is a very, very bad part about this. Because as I mentioned, what if you just need one certain thing, but you just keep not getting it? Because it takes probably going to take a long time to level up a command rank, and then once you level it up, you get one crate, and it's not confirmed how much is going to be in that one crate. Whether you only get one armor piece or two or something, but either way. There is a very good chance that you won't get that one single thing you need, and so、um, you know what kind of checks and balances are there to ensure that you actually are going to be able to、uh, not spend an insane amount of time to get an armor set. And what they answered was,、um, you can always get more crates, and you can disintegrate any duplicate or unwanted item into CXP to get your next crate faster. So let's say, for example, you've got all the pieces of a of an armor set that you need, and then you only need the earpiece. Well, if you get the pants and the helmet, for example, you can just disintegrate those. That will give you more CXP and help you get to your next crate faster. So that's one check and balance they have.、Uh, also, another thing is there that、um, the craftable gear that was comparable. They didn't have the set bonus. That's still available on the GTN. So if you just needed one thing, you can usually probably use something off the GTN, and then that will be enough to get you going until you actually end up getting that item from a command crate. And then the final thing he said: Yes, all endgame gear level seventy plus can be earned by doing almost any activity. So technically, someone can just spam heroics and can continue to do those and then get the best gear. But he does make it clear that、um, doing nightmare level operations, which is the highest, will give you sub、uh, substantially more CXP and therefore much you'll level up much much faster. So、uh, when he says substantially, it's not you know confirmed what they mean by that. But hopefully, people who are putting in a lot more work and spending a lot more hours playing the game will get rewarded a lot, lot faster. Like not just even a little bit. Like 
He said substantially so. Once again, we don't have a number to that or anything, but hopefully it's a lot. Since bosses will no longer drop gear in operations, will there be lockouts on operations? And he says, yes, lockouts will still remain in place. Although they don't directly drop gear, they will drop their other cosmetic rewards and will be one of the best sources for command experience points. One thing they didn't mention, but I do know is like basically a fact, is uh, it's not just doing the operation itself that gives you these points, but killing bosses and stuff will give you command trophies, which you can then claim and increase your CXP. So all these kind of things combine together to really allow you to level up pretty fast. Uh, balancing will be the key if doing ops rewards, say four times galactic points and anything else thus effectively dumps way more crates on you faster, then it will be totally worth it to do ops and gear faster fastest this way and he says bonus aside it is the goal that fa it is the goal that fastest way to earn cxp will be through the hardest difficulty operations and uprisings along with ranked arenas so all of these three things just think of them as the best or fastest way to get cxp and so that's kind of the incentive to do all these things okay how much more there's a few more questions uh so how are F2P and preferred players supposed to get op-worthy gear after Kotet launches? Their simple answer was, they won't. I mean, that's really what it is. You basically have to be subscribed to get this endgame gear, so it's kind of a middle finger to F2P and preferred players, unfortunately. Uh, how can you do the hardest difficulties without having gear first? This seems kind of contradictory to me. Surely you first need a decent set of gear before you can launch Nightmare Mode. And he simply said, well, the current system right now is that, you know, let's say you have to level up to level 70. Even without the Galactic Command system, you wouldn't be able to play the high level things without gear. You still need to play like Story Mode and stuff. And so that's not really a change. Uh, will this, okay, we were talked about that. And what about level 70 gear? Will we be naked? Uh, he said, you will still get gear from all the normal sources pre-70, okay? So this doesn't really affect anything pre-70. It's everything is after Kotet. Uh, flashpoint bosses, mission drops, etc. The only exception is that you can no longer get gear for commendations. The planetary vendors, which sold mods for commendations, will now do so for credits instead. So these vendors aren't being removed. And you have these vendors all over the place, especially in Rishi and Oricon and stuff. And so these vendors will now give you that stuff for credits rather than these commendations and crystals, which are all being removed. So that is the huge wealth of information we have on the changes that are going to be happening to Endgame Gear. They're all very big and very substantial, and I'd love to hear your opinion, so please leave a comment section. Uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be sure to read it and respond, because I'm really interested to see how the community is going to react to this. Now, my personal qualm with this is one major thing. I mean, I don't really mind about anything else. It's just that how hard is it going to be to get ranked PvP gear or the equivalent to that um, in this new system? Because keep in mind, right now, it's actually really easy to get ranked PvP gear. Because ever since they removed ranked Warzone Commendations, and they just said you can use the basic Warzone Commendations to get ranked gear, it's been very, very easy. And basically everyone, everyone at high level PvP, level 65, has a set of ranked PvP gear. And so it's a very, very even playing field. But now, oh wait, before that, also... Um, it's very, very difficult to get a full set of the highest PvE gear. I'm not even sure what it's called, but I know it's very, very difficult. You have to put in a lot of time and effort to do that. And so I'm wondering, you know, after this uh, patch hits and we have the new Galactic Command system, are we going to have to put in way more work to get the best PvE gear possible? I mean, to get the best PvP gear possible because, you know, we're also that's also going to act as PvE gear. And my point is, if we have to put in hours upon hours upon hours to get the best PvP gear, well then... It's kind of a middle finger to play, uh, casual players as well. Like casual players right now, under the current system, can still do war zones and can still get the best gear and just go in and have fun. But under this system, it's really rewarding people who spend hours upon hours grinding the game and doing all this stuff, and not you know not necessarily uh, very friendly for casual players that don't have that much time to do it. Especially myself, you know I don't have time to go and grind all this stuff. And it can sound a little whiny, you guys might think, you know, well, no, if you want to get the best gear, you should put in the work. But the fact of the matter is, we still put in a substantial amount of work. It's just that, you know, we're not sure how long it's going to take to level up to Command Rank 100. And, um, and, um, and right now, they said ranked PvP war zones are the best way to get, uh, to get CXP. So does that mean they want all these noobs and people who don't have the best gear still queuing up for rank just so they can get the CXP and move on? That's not going to be very good for the ranked PvP players who are actually playing competitively and stuff. And so there are some problems with the system. That's my biggest thing because that's about the only thing I do in the game is PvP. And so um, I would like it if they uh, maybe still made it a little bit easier to get that gear. And, um, and we won't have to put in hours to do it. But that's just my personal opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found it informative. I'll see you in the next one.